My interest in the Israel-Palestine conflict was sparked in late 2010, early 2011 with Operation Cast Lead. Now, Operation Cast Lead in the Irish media was painted as an absolute genocide, um, very black and white news reporting. So I wanted to go and see it for myself. Uh, I wanted to go and see were the Israelis as nasty as they were being painted as being in the, in the paper. So I applied for funding from the Irish Arts Council uh, to go and make a, a documentary in, in the Middle East. Went out there and I spent eight weeks in Israel. Um, going out there, I carried with me all the usual um, Western European ideas about Israel and about the conflict. Um, I wouldn't say I was uh, hardcore anti-Israel. I was very skeptical of Israeli foreign policy, etc. So I went out and there was a series of events that happened that I wouldn't say even by the time I left Israel I would have called myself a Zionist. I spent eight months editing the film and that was really uh, intense because you're reliving your, your experiences over and over. Every day you're watching the interviews that you did uh, trying to find the little sentence that you're going to use. Um, so then the film came out actually yesterday, one year ago in Ireland and uh, immediately was jumped on as, as being, uh, obviously I was employed by Mossad and I was getting all Jew gold and you know, I was completely in the pocket of, of the Israeli embassy. Um, to launch the film, I decided to write uh, an opinion piece. Um, for My tactic was to submit it to an Irish newspaper um, in the hope that they wouldn't publish it. And then I'd publish it in a British newspaper to, to show how ridiculous the bias was in Ireland. But it backfired kind of nicely because they did publish it. And the reaction was really crazy. I mean, I expected all of the hate mail and the threats and the emails about dead children's blood in your hands and all this kind of thing I was getting every day. But what I didn't expect was the support uh, from Irish people. And it was really encouraging. But the one thing that was disappointing was that all of the abuse and all of the hatred was very public, all of the support was very private. And people, you know, I got a lot of letters, a lot of emails, and a lot of Irish people were saying, you know, we support your stance, or at least uh, we're open to, to looking at it again. Um, but it kind of saddens me that there's this bunker mentality has been created, and there's, it's just not possible to speak up for Israel in many parts of Europe. Um, there's many reasons for this, obviously, but then I think sometimes uh, the, the worst enemy of Israel can be the Jews themselves. Um, the reason I say that, I, in the process of promoting the film, I, I went around screening it in different places. I was invited to Canada uh, to, to, to show the film. I uh, did three screenings in Canada, and the more Jewish the audience, the more they hated the film. And I just felt completely devastated, really, having taken all this abuse in Ireland to then go and get my head cut off by the people I was trying to stick up for. But the thing that kind of saddened me was that there's a huge, I have found in promoting this film, there's a huge disconnect between what I call the hyphenated Jews and Israelis themselves. And I think a lot of, obviously not all, but a lot of, um, of the more hardcore right-wing Jewish people could honestly do with spending a week in Israel and realizing that um, it's not Disneyland. And this is a problem also in that uh, I encountered it a lot that uh, Jewish people tend to think that Israel is some form of utopian uh, perfect place, which it's not. And it's no more perfect than Sweden or Ireland, but it is a functioning democracy and it's the only democracy in the Middle East. And it's a democracy that people risked their lives to get to. Um, it was a really interesting point that I found in, uh, in Israel because obviously all the news that we get on Israel focuses on the bombs and the bullets and the exciting stuff. But, so we don't hear about the inner workings of, of the country. The thing that really surprised me in Israel was all the sub-Saharan refugees that uh, risked their neck, come all the way up through all these different countries to get to Israel. I mean, they, those people could try and get anywhere, but they don't. They, they try and come to Israel. And as, as many of them said to me, they feel that the Jewish people could be the one people who will understand the plight of a refugee. And 
Unfortunately, though, when I took this point to Canada, the, the Jewish uh, diaspora were not happy with this, and some incredibly racist, um, really difficult things to listen to were, were said at some of, the, some of the screenings. And I think, really, that's, that's the number one thing that needs to change, is that um, people need to go to Israel. People need to, to um, f learn the realities of day-to-day -day life in contemporary Israel, not what they, they think it is or what, what's on the news. Uh, and I think... Because personally, it happened to me. I mean, I bought into everything I, I, I read on the news. I, I believed everything I was fed. But then I went to Israel, and I had a complete change of heart. So it's the one thing that I would say to anybody. I was hoping there was going to be some crazies out here today protesting, because they're the people, I mean, it's like preaching to the choir here. But that's the one thing I, I, I wanted to say to the crazies was go to Israel. You know, just go to Israel for a week. Talk to Israelis. Just go to Israel, drink a beer, go to the beach and just experience Israel and you'll come back with a different, completely different uh, frame of mind on the whole conflict as I did. Um, that's all I'm going to say to you today. Thank you very much.